Trevor Zegers got benched in the third period against the Blue Jackets on Wednesday. We're going to dive in and try to figure out what the heck happened here. Let's go. Before we get this video started and get into the breakdown of Trevor Zegers' last shift, the shift that I believe got him benched, I do want to make one thing perfectly clear. This one shift, this one sequence is just that. It's one play. It doesn't necessarily define Zegers as a player. No player is defined by just one single play. And so I know that there's going to be maybe some people that are going to watch this and you know see Trevor Zegers struggling and think, "Aha, there it is. He's not as good as people say. This, you know, that that's what the thrust of this video is." And that's just not the intent here at all. The intent is to understand why did a benching happen? A player getting benched in a game is, a, to me, a pretty big deal, especially in a close game where he was benched for the entire third period and the overtime period. We want to understand that that is the goal here. I watched all of Trevor Zegers' shifts in this game, and overall, I don't think that he had a bad game. I think that he... You know, certainly wasn't as in control, as on top of it offensively as he usually is. I think that he did kind of still bring a little bit of that physicality that we saw in the previous games, but certainly nowhere near what we've become accustomed to over the course of this regular season so far. That being said, you know, was any of it enough to warrant, you know, benching a player, especially benching one of your two best offensive players in a close bin, in a close game. In my opinion, no. That being said, I'm not the one in the trenches. I'm not the one making the calls. I'm not the one like Greg Cronin is that's trying to set a culture, that's trying to set a standard within a game, within a team. And so I understand where he is coming from on that. With all those caveats, all those disclaimers out of the way, although I do think it's important just for the context of this video, Let's jump into it and see what we can figure out. All right, so this is the shift. This is the sequence overall that I believe gets Trevor Zegers benched. We're going to watch it in its full entirety, though. You saw him turn it over at the blue line there. Not a super noteworthy turnover. Ducks are able to resume possession, try to get a zone entry here, and they're able to do that. Terry dumps it off to Zegers. They walk it in, and boom, they have possession again, so no harm, no foul. Ducks looking for something here, that low triangle that we've talked about, low to high, back to Mintukov, looking for a shooting lane, doesn't see it, that's good patience by Mintukov, then he shoots it, thinking there's a lane, there isn't one, puck battle along the wall, Zegers gets in there, turns into possession for the Blue Jackets, not great, things are going super fantastic, Ducks break up that rush, and now rush going back the other way for the Ducks, Zegers with a potential three on one you know just kind of doesn't get anything out of that rush turns it over and then the blue jackets get their own rush and if you'll see trevor zegers there just not really getting back into the picture well enough so breaking it all down we can start with this initial sequence i don't think that this is the one that got him benched i mean i hope not because this is just kind of a whatever play but matukov gets it over zegers and here, he's really trying to isolate this defender to then create space for his teammate to get it back over to Minchukov. Instead, he does that. He draws him in, but tries that no-look backhand that we've seen him we've seen him make this play countless times, even within a game. So it's a pretty routine play for him, but he doesn't pull it off, and he leaves it there in the middle of the ice for the Blue Jackets. That turns into a rush going back the other way for them. So... You know, not great. Coaches don't love that, but turnovers happen within a game. Mistakes happen within a game. I don't think that that is what did it. Maybe that's what started chipping away at it. Because really up to this point in the game, I didn't see a whole lot from Trevor Zegers that would warrant him getting benched. It certainly was not his best game as we talked about in the, the previous disclaimer clip, though. So now as the Ducks try to work that possession, you know, nothing really coming of it. Mintukov get the, gets that point shot, blocked. Then you have this puck battle. Ducks lose that. Zegers just kind of, I mean, maybe if you want to be really nitpicky here, as you see him get into that scrum, into that battle, he does kind of blindly try to put it back to the point between his legs. 
frame by frame. You see that? See that little between the legs? I don't think Greg Cronin saw this, though, from the bench. <laughs> I mean, think about the angle. But, you know, between the legs, it's I mean, it's just to no one. And I get that he's trying to get it back to the point, but it's not a great play. I think we can say that. But this is really what does it for me here. So, Zegers, time and space on the rush. This is really where you think, hey, Trevor Zegers can live. This is, this is really his forte is time and space with the puck off the rush, one of the most creative guys, maybe the most creative guy in the NHL, you're expecting to see something good. And right off the hop, I mean, if he acts quickly here, he's got a passing lane to Ryan Strom that he can take advantage of. And if he just kind of keeps going, he's eventually going to have this trailing option in Troy Terry. So there's a lot to work with here. And don't forget, there's with this much space, there's probably going to be a shooting lane takes it in, head up. You like to see that. He's definitely scanning, right? Trying to figure out, trying to assess the situation, head up, scanning. But now the issue is this. As he's trying to manipulate the play, one option has been eliminated. So now he's down to two options. And what are those options? Get a shot on net or dump it off to your teammate, Troy Terry, as the trailer. Instead, Zegers just kind of hangs on. You can even see Terry clapping a stick behind the play, trying to get his attention. And he just kind of tries to blindly throw it in front of the net. I mean, it's really just a misplay by Trevor Zegers. And this, this will happen. You're not going to nail it every single time. So it keeps going, tries to get that shooting threat, you know, getting it on his forehand. You can see the stick tap by Terry. Just tries to blindly throw it in front doesn't happen so he's thinking okay i gotta reset this get this back to the point because if you look at the picture right now the ducks have four players one two three four they have four players beneath the goal line and when that happens if you're gonna throw it back to the point you better make sure that it's a good pass because it could potentially turn into a rush for the other team instead Terry take, Zegers, sorry, takes one look, throws it back, and it turns into a turnover. One thing I want to point out, though, on that rush, before we get to the, the next part of this sequence, though, I think this was a critique that I heard a lot about Zegers in his draft year, is that sometimes when he enters the zone, when he enters on a rush, he kind of stops moving his feet. So what I mean by that is, look at his base here. You know, it's wide, he's no longer striding, and hey, if you're going to be on a rush, sometimes you do have, you have to do this, you have to slow down, you have to create a threat. Maybe you could argue that if he keeps striding here, you know, because if you go back just a couple, couple ticks, he's actually got some decent speed going here, a couple crossovers, that's great, but then he just stops, right, And, and that gives the defense maybe the time it needs to adjust. Instead, doesn't do that. Terry behind the play, maybe getting a little impatient, tapping his stick. So, you know, what could he have done differently just to set this up better? I mean, I think maybe a couple more strides and going out just a little wider, just a just a touch wider, just to give a little more space for this to develop and also maybe a little more of an angle to get it over to Strom. Not perfect, right? I mean, there, it's easy to have all the answers after the fact. I think that if he keeps just a couple more strides entering the zone and then goes out just a little wider, that will create options for him. Also, I will say that this doesn't really change anything, but you would like to see Strom drive to the net a lot harder here. Now, one thing I do want to talk about is that Greg Cronin has really preached and has been really upset in post games about getting shots from the money area. Yes, that is a dollar sign. And so if he sees a player like a Trevor Zegers, let's fix that dollar, like a Trevor Zegers coming in with a clear cut opportunity to shoot. I mean, it's hard to pass up these kind of shots unless you get it to a, a better shot location. Like we would see here with Troy Terry. Well, coach is probably not going to like that. I think that that definitely chips away at your, uh, 
your your equity with the coach if you're not shooting from those prime areas that he's been publicly really criticizing his team about not shooting from. So, not great, but is that a reason to bench a guy? We don't know. But here, though, the mistake, the turnover, and one thing we always talk about that we've talked about on this channel is that if you're going to make a mistake, that's okay, but it's how you recover from that mistake that really is going to dictate maybe how your coach views that mistake. They want to see the effort to, to repair the situation. And here, it's a three-on-two for the Blue Jackets developing, shorthanded, mind you. And Trevor Zegers is not yet in the picture. If you look at the far right of your screen, all you can see is a stick, right? And I'm not saying that he should be right in the thick of it right away, but coaches want to see you get back in the picture, especially in a situation where you're the one who turned it over. So play continues. All we can still see is Zegers' stick. Oh, there's Zegers now. Now he's in the picture, but it's too late. The Blue Jackets have gotten a chance. And look at Zegers' posture. Look at his body language. Looks exhausted, potentially. Maybe it, it was a longer shift, but he's upright. I mean, if you're going to make that kind of turnover, you know, that kind of miscue in the offensive zone in a close game where the coach has been preaching to get shots in the middle and you turn it over, hey, that's fine, but you have to show some effort coming back. And here he's upright. Coaches hate that. If you are not in the picture until the last second and you are upright, that's going to draw the ire of a pro coach. It just is. That's just how it works. Anyone who's played any level of hockey will tell you that if, if a coach spots you doing that, especially if you were at fault for something beforehand that they really didn't like, that is not going to go over well. Now, my own opinion, I don't think that that should justify benching a player especially in a close game, let him work through his mistakes. But, you know, I'm not the one in the trenches. I'm not the one on the battlefield trying to set a standard for this team. And so, you know, would I have done it? No. Can I see why Greg Cronin potentially did it? Yes, because, I mean, this. I think this sequence is really the one that does it. Watching all his other shifts, I didn't really see anything that stuck out. You know, maybe this will be a moment that grows the, the relationship between the two, between coach and player. Hopefully it does. Hopefully that Zegers learns from it. This was a theme in this game. I thought he took really long shifts and it's hard to have that extra effort, right? It's hard to get back and be on your horse and get back in the picture when you're tired and taking really long shifts. I mean, he took some really long ones. There was one prior to this at five on five where he was out there for damn near two minutes. And I don't think it's because he was stuck out there. It's just because he was kind of prolonging it. So there's a lot of things he can iron out. Greg Cronin is trying to reel him in early. We will see how it develops. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe to the Crash the Pond YouTube channel. Support the channel and support the Crash the Pond podcast. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.